Hello. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, my name is Jody Skold, and I'm so pleased to have you as a part of this webinar. It is episode number three of Attract Clients Now. Episode number three is Networking Sucks. Or does it? <laughs> my name is Jody Skulls, and I am pleased at, at part of this webinar. You, I have been a successful massage therapist for the last 20 years. I built a massage practice from scratch in 1994 when there was no internet. And uh, that was, I built it to a thriving practice of over 100 clients a week and over 15 full-time and part-time staff. In 2008, I sold my practice and began consulting with massage therapists just like you on how to build their practice. I have a deep passion for seeing massage therapists financially successful, and that's why I wrote this webinar series. So let's jump in and do this thing, huh? All right. Thank you for joining me in the third session. In fact, please ignore the screen. It says second, but third session on how to attract clients now. This is the third in a six-part series. Each part stands alone, and yet each part builds on each, each other as well. Each section is clearly titled, so you can focus on what you need. This session, Networking Sucks, or Does It, um, can make or break your practice. Today, we're going to concentrate on putting your best self forward in the public eye. I believe when you follow through on these simple guidelines, you will attract more clients than you can even imagine right now. No matter where you are in your practice, the journey of a thousand miles must begin with the first step. No matter where you are in your practice, new or experienced, I believe you're on the right path. I'd also like to thank you. I'd like to thank you for becoming a massage therapist. This is a noble and honorable profession. You have a gift to give to the world, and I want to help you deliver that gift to even more clients. So, let's set our intention for the session. Take a breath. Dear Universe, please guide my thoughts today. Please help me to clearly hear, see, and feel. I know the divine guidance that I've asked for is now manifesting. As I sit down to participate in this learning, allow me to keep my ego out of the way so that wisdom can come streaming through and to me for the highest good of my clients, the highest good of my family, the highest good for me and for all concerned. And so it is. Thank you. Breathe that in. Now let's take a look at our journey for today. As a massage therapist, did you realize you wear many hats? <laughs> you may not be fully aware of it, uh, but you have many different roles to play. And in earlier episodes, we have talked about operations and management of your practice. In episode number two, we talked a little bit about marketing, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that today. As we move through this six-part series, we are going to investigate each different role in detail. We're going to analyze how you handle that position in your company now and how you'd like to handle it in the future. Take a deep breath. Exhale. This is a journey. And this is just one more baby step. So networking. Networking like a rock star. For some people, the idea of networking gives them cold, sweaty palms, a sick feeling in the pit of your stomach, eye-rolling, dread. Is this how you feel when you think about networking? Maybe you've even thought 
Oh, it's way too early to be doing this. Gosh, and so often there's phony people with fake smiles aggressively selling. And really, at 7.30 in the morning, all this rah-rah? Why, you might even think, why did I ever attend to, agree to attend this event? Oh, can't stand these type of things. Indeed. Sometimes this is what we find at networking events. However, you don't have to feel like that. Today, we're going to reveal the secrets that allow you to network like a pro. After discovering the simple tools we'll use today, you'll weed out overzealous salesy people and you'll stay laser focused on meeting other health and wellness professionals all the while feeling calm and confident and this session will make you irresistible to your ideal clients who need you right now. Imagine you as an awesome networking rock star. <laughs> In this episode we are going to turn you into a rock star by covering three simple but profound principles. One, how to distinguish the three different types of networking meetings. Two, how to create an awesome elevator pitch and a really interesting introduction. And then three, how to follow up after the event. So, what is networking anyway? If you've been in business for any length of time, you've probably been invited to promote your business via networking. This is simply a group of people coming together to create visibility for their business. Too often, well-meaning, enthusiastic business people mistake a networking event as a selling event. The purpose is not to sell. Networking is just for visibility. There are three types of networking meetings. The weekly meeting, the open networking meeting, and the special event. Let's start with the weekly meeting. This is a meeting that has members, has a set agenda. Normally, the meeting is about 90 minutes long and will include a breakfast or a lunch. There's a fee to visit the meeting. There's a fee to join if you decide you want to become a member. And there's a limited number of visits that you can make to a network, a weekly networking meeting, before the members will ask you if you're interested in joining. This is a photo of an actual networking group from my area. It's a large group that meets weekly. To get the most out of visiting a weekly meeting, I wanted to give you some helpful hints. I wanted to talk to you about a, at a weekly meeting about what to wear, what to bring, when to arrive, and of course what to say. So, what do networking rock stars wear? <laughs> As a massage therapist, we have a stereotype to overcome. Words that normally come to mind to describe our tribe are free-spirited, open, hippie. When going to a meeting with lawyers, accountants, and insurance agents, we have to look the part. You don't need a three-piece suit, but leave the long flowing skirts and yoga pants at home. If you wear a uniform, wear it to work. In wear it to the meeting. In fact, let's talk for a moment about what you wear to work. A staff shirt is highly recommended. Find your stylish shirt and get it embroidered with the name of your company or simply with massage therapists. Here you can see some examples of a t-shirt and a running jacket. Get solid color pants that fit properly. If you choose to wear shorts, please wear them longer than the fingertip length when your arms are by your side. Yes, your fashion is your own personal style. Too often I've heard, Jody, I love corporate America so I could wear what I want. I get it. However, a networking meeting is not the time for your rebel yell. Everyone else in the room 
is a potential client and knows dozens of other potential clients. To be understood, to be taken seriously, we need to run to the beat of their drummer. You can do this. You can get new clients. Yes, you can do this just for 90 minutes. You can handle it. Now that you know what to wear, I want to talk to you a little bit about what to bring. What do networking rock stars bring to a meeting? Business cards. Flyers in a folder. In a folder so it doesn't get crushed. Bring more cards than you think you'll need. Have backup cards in the car. And hey, on your card, if you have crossed out a phone number or an email, order new cards. No handwritten information on your cards. It's a way to look unprofessional. Additionally, I mentioned bring a flyer. Not only your business cards, but a flyer. A one-page flyer is fine. Something simple. It can have the 10 benefits of massage and, of course, seven essential pieces of information on every marketing piece. Remember that from episode two? Your name, your address, phone number, website, special offer, call to action, and an expiration date. You can add your rates to the flyer if you like, but it's not essential. So the two things to bring, business cards and a flyer. What to wear, what to bring, when to arrive. You'll want to arrive early or at least on time. Hey, plan on getting lost. If you don't get lost, you can spend 10 minutes in the parking lot practicing your elevator pitch, visualizing a successful event, getting yourself into a state of positiveness with great music or affirmations. Look, showing up late is disrespectful to the people who are talking or running the meeting. Look, unexpected delays happen, but plan to arrive early to avoid interrupting the meeting. Look, it happens to me all the time. Getting lost, that is. That's why I plan to arrive early. It simply shows to respect to the members and to the host. All right, networking rock stars, what to wear, what to bring, when to arrive, now, what to say. No matter how smooth you are, we are going to write out your introductions. At a weekly meeting, you'll have three opportunities to talk. Before the meeting begins, during the mix and mingle, there'll be an initial introduction and then a longer real introduction. First will be the mix and mingle, time before the meeting. This is where you'll use something called your elevator pitch. The name elevator pitch comes from the concept of riding in an elevator. Imagine being in an elevator and going from the 15th floor to the first floor. Someone gets in the elevator and contrary to what happens normally, they say, hello, my name is Bob. What's your name? Nice to meet you, Susie. What do you do? What you say next should make them say, hey, how do you do that? When asked by a new person, so what do you do? Your response can make them say, really, how do you do that? Here are some examples. So, Susie, what do you do? I work with people who suffer from migraines to help them live a pain-free life. Really? How do you do that? I help athletes improve their performance and stay injury-free. So, Rob, what do you do? I help clients eliminate lower back pain without pills or surgery. Think for a moment. Who have you helped lately? Lawyer with major stress? Banker with a headache? Female with foot pain? Active male with low back pain? 
you can craft your own elevator pitch using the formula I help blank person with a specific symptom or profession to blank eliminate pain, decrease stress, improve performance remember this phrase will pique a person's interest enough to ask how do you do that? test your pitch on a colleague or a friend ask them how does it sound again you're going to use this elevator pitch during the mix and mingle time before the meeting begins the next opportunity you're going to have to speak at a weekly meeting is during the initial introductions guests of a meeting are typically given 10 to 20 seconds to say who you are and what you do those can be the longest 20 seconds of your life if you haven't prepared what you'll say <laughs> you're simply going to say your name your profession your company name and a memory hook welcome to the memory hook hello smiling my name is Betty Smith and I'm a massage therapist at All Hands Therapeutic Massage I rub people the right way this section the italicized part I rub people the right way is called a memory hook and you're gonna choose one today <laughs> here are some examples Isla de Pache, massage on your own personal island of peace. Take a seat chair massage. Give me 15 minutes and I'll give you 100% retention. Hi, my name is Jody Scholes and I'm a massage therapist. For less than $100, I can make you feel like a million bucks. These are some examples of memory hooks and there's a lot out there. You can create your own. You can look some up online. Got issues with your tissue? I can help. <laughs> There's all sorts of fun you can have with a memory hook. And that is what you want to use on your initial introduction on the short version. The next and final opportunity you'll have to speak at a weekly meeting will be for the longer introduction. It's the real introduction. If you're not prepared for this, that one minute could be the longest minute of your day. So we're going to use a formula. P plus S equals HO. The formula for your introduction, your one minute introduction, is problem plus solution equals happy outcome. Let me mention again, I'm giving you a formula so you can duplicate this process over and over again. We don't want to talk about the same old tired story year after year. So we're going to pick a symptom. We're going to pick a problem. We are going to explain the solution briefly. We're going to describe a happy outcome. And then we're going to wrap up with the words, a great referral for me would be, here's an example. Pick a problem. I recently had a client come to me because they were having terrible migraine headaches. Explain the solution. I worked with her once a week for three weeks and explain the happy outcome she's been pain-free for over a month she comes back once a month for maintenance and is still amazed she hasn't missed one of her son's baseball games from having a bad headache the wrap-up a great referral for me would be to someone who suffers with migraine headaches my name is Betty Smith from Beltway Medical Massage where we offer you pain-free living without pills so all together it would sound like, Hello, my name is Betty Smith. I'm a massage therapist from Beltway Medical Massage. I recently had a client come to me because they were having trouble with terrible migraine headaches. I worked with her once a week for three weeks, and she's been pain-free for over a month. She comes back once a month for maintenance and is still amazed she hasn't missed one of her son's baseball games from having a bad headache. A great referral for me would be to someone who suffers with migraine headaches. My name is Betty Smith from Beltway Medical Massage, where we offer you pain-free living without pills. How does that sound? Go ahead and compose your own formula for your one-minute introduction, and then practice it and time yourself. 
make sure that it's less than a minute. Sometimes we get a little wordy. This one averages about 40 seconds, the one that you have an example of right here. Prepare it ahead of time and print it out. The folks at your networking meetings will really appreciate that you've prepared ahead of time and will be really patient and encouraging. Once you've used your introduction five to ten times, hey, you might be able to swing without a net, but to be honest, if I'm going to a new meeting, I write out what I want to say to make sure my message gets delivered. A quick review. Pick a problem, explain the solution, describe the happy outcome, and wrap up with a good referral for me would be an overview of what we just talked about, the three times you'll be speaking at a meeting, at a weekly networking meeting. You'll be talking to people during the mix and mingle. For that, you'll use your elevator pitch. The initial introduction, 10 to 20 seconds, and then the real introduction. That'll last about a minute. We've discussed the weekly meeting. Now it's time to move on to the open networking meeting. The key to an open networking event is to set three goals before you even walk in the room. You see, an open networking event allows you to mix and mingle with everyone in the room. So you want to set some goals, at least three. Here are some examples. I want to gather 10 business cards. I plan to meet a chiropractor or other healthcare professional. I want to meet that neighboring business that I haven't met the owner of yet. I want to practice my elevator speech. Ask a lot of questions during an open networking event and wait to offer any information about yourself until you're asked. We used to play a game to see how much information we could ask and gather from people before we even ever told them what we did. If you're asked, hey, what do you do? Use your elevator pitch, if and when you are asked. About halfway through the open networking, there'll be some announcements and an introduction of the VIPs in the room. And at times, guests are allowed to introduce themselves. I want you to use your initial introduction the 10 to 20 second version, just do the name, company name, the short formula, and wrap it up. Here's an example. If asked as a guest to speak at an open networking event, here's your formula. Here's your example. My name is Rob Robertson, and I'm a massage therapist, all hands therapeutic massage. I work with women who suffer from migraine headaches to allow them to live pain-free, Never again missing days at work or kids' soccer games because they have a headache or are sensitive to light. Again, my name is Rob Robertson from All Hands Therapeutic Massage. We offer pain-free living without pills. What do you think? Not bad, huh? Use this formula, this template, this example to craft your own brief introduction if you're going to an open networking event. Be prepared if they ask if there are any guests in the room. You can have this on a 3x5 card and read it right into the microphone. It's a little intimidating when you get handed that microphone. You might want to take a deep breath and go ahead and just read your introduction. You'll be prepared. People will be patient. All right. We've covered the weekly meeting. We've covered the open networking meeting. Now it's time to talk about special events. Special events are open networking with a theme. I like to find special events that have a health and wellness theme. This could be a health fair, it could be a trade show for a medical profession, chiropractor, physical therapist, orthopedic surgeon convention, could be a large association event like our AMTA or ABMP. During a special event, you'll most likely be walking around and visiting booths during the event. 
Your interaction will be limited, sometimes very short. Use your elevator pitch if and when you're asked, what do you do? Gather business cards from all the booths you visit. You can drop your own business cards uh, into their fish bowls or hand those out as well. But during a special event networking, you want to get business cards from as many of those booths as you can, and especially the health and wellness related booths. Because once you've attended your special event, even after any type of meeting, the open networking, the weekly meeting, after you've attended that event, now it's time to follow up. After all those networking events, you'll have a plan of action on what to do with the business cards you've collected. I'm about to outline your step-by-step -step plan of action. However, warning, do not just add the names on those business cards that you've received to your e-newsletter list. You must ask their permission. Perhaps you've had a longer conversation with a health and wellness colleague at a meeting. Ask them right there and then. With your permission, I'll add you to the handful of people that receive my e-newsletter list. And then make a note on the back of their card that they wanted to be included on your e-newsletter. You cannot just go and gather 15 or 20 business cards and put them all on your e-newsletter list. Hey guys. Have you ever been added to an e-newsletter list or an email campaign list without your permission? Have you ever deleted or unsubscribed? Yeah, most of us have. If you forget to ask permission, but you know there's someone you think that would really be interested in staying in touch, you can email them after the event and write something like this. Hi, Mrs. So-and-so. It was nice to meet you at the ABC networking event. After talking to you, I'd like to connect with you again. One of the ways I stay in touch with like-minded people is through a monthly newsletter. However, I never add people to my newsletter list without first asking. So, with your permission, would you like to be a part of the handful of people who get my e-newsletter? Either way, I won't be offended. It's simply one way I stay in touch. How did that sound? Of course they're probably going to say, yeah, sure. And then if they don't, they respect you even more for asking. It's a very classy way to do business. Speaking of class, I have mentioned a step-by-step -step process to follow up. First step, the beauty of a handwritten note. Because our email box is littered with so many unimportant emails, I recommend the people with whom you've traded business cards receive a handwritten note from you. Plan about 15 minutes the day after your event to write these notes. You can write something like, It was so nice to meet you at the ABC networking event. Thanks for taking some time to speak with me. I enjoyed learning a little bit about your business services. Good luck in the future as your business continues to grow. All the best. Your name. As we move through this webinar, these examples are going to be available to you again. Pause the screen, pause the series, go ahead and use these words. You can write the same thing to everybody. It keeps it simple. What's classy is you're doing it as a handwritten note. Now if your handwriting doesn't look good, go ahead and type it out but sign it personally. And maybe even put a little two word or three word greeting in your own handwriting. But again, if your handwriting isn't great, feel free just to sign it. So that's step number one, the handwritten note. Second step, one-to-ones. Occasionally you may find someone who is in an immediate need of your services, but normally at a meeting, you're simply looking to raise some interest. At a meeting, you're looking to make people curious about how you deliver your service. We never know where our next great referral source is going to come from, so at times, 
will want to set up one-to-one -one meetings to get to know a person better. Note, one-to-ones are not sales calls. This is a time to develop credibility. When you sit down for a one-to-one, -one, you may find people are trying to sell. Let them do their thing. They're still learning. You've already learned this lesson. In fact, I want to share with you what a large networking organization called BNI, Business Networking International, a formula. They have a formula that they use called V plus C equals P. This is a great formula to remember when it comes to building credibility. Visibility plus credibility equals profitability. At the weekly meeting or at an open networking meeting, you simply create visibility. By attending regularly or becoming a member, you start to create credibility. But to jumpstart building your credibility, you sit down and do a one-to-one. -one. Some people have called it an informational interview, gathering details about the person who's across the table from you. Really simple to have coffee with a person first thing in the morning, grab some lunch with them, but you're looking to gather details about the person across the table. And you guessed it, I'm going to give you some helpful hints on how to have a successful one-to-one. -one. The one-on-one -on -one is a time to ask questions and listen more than talk. I mentioned BNI earlier, and they have a one-to-one -one worksheet I'll share with you, and it's based on the acronym GAINS. So you can see here what that, that acronym stands for. What are the goals in your business? You're going to ask the person across the table, what are your goals in business? What accomplishments have they had within their industry? What are some of their interests outside of work? Ask the person across from you, what, hey, what networks do you belong to other than the one I met you at? And also ask them what skills do they have that make them stand out in their profession. There is a PDF file that you'll get um, with your um, copy of this webinar. And this is a GAINS worksheet. You don't have to stick to just these questions. You can get creative, but plan ahead. Here are some other questions you can ask during a one-to-one. -one. So where'd you grow up? How long have you been in the area? Hey, what's your favorite sports team? Hey, how'd you get started doing what you do? What interested you about doing what you do? Tell me, what's a great customer of yours? What makes them a great client? How are you referred to your great customer? Hey, what specific people or industries are good sources of referrals for you? If the person you're having a one-to-one -one with is a observant, They'll ask you some of the same questions, so you can be prepared to answer those too, the same questions, just in case they asked. This is going to build rapport and credibility. By learning about the other person's business, you'll build the friendliness and the trustworthiness of your relationship. When other people see that you're truly interested and learning about them and their businesses, that builds value in your relationship. As a result, they will be more likely to refer you as well, even if they really don't know much about what you do. Hey, learning about their business, hopefully you can refer potential clients to them. It's the whole idea of doing a one-to-one. -one. Let's take a quick review of networking like a rock star. In this session so far, we've identified three different types of networking groups. You can now compare and distinguish which type of a meeting would be best for you. 
We've summarized and crafted three different types of introductions to use at these meetings. You have a formula and the tools to develop and prepare your own elevator pitch, your brief initial introduction, and also a real long, longer introduction, including what's a good referral for you. And finally, you can now easily duplicate the process of following up with your potential new clients in two simple steps. A, the handwritten note, and B, having a one-to-one. -one. In fact, you even got a bonus form to use as a guide, as well as several personal examples of questions you can ask during a one-to-one. -one. Is this good stuff? <laughs> I think so. I thought this was killer content when I reviewed this. All right. Homework, networking rock star. You're going to get started right away. Google the words B&I and the name of your city. Type in the name of your chamber of commerce and the word events. Two different Google searches. B&I and the name of your city and chamber of commerce and the word events. You're going to find three meetings to attend in the next two weeks. In this six-part series, I recommend taking a short break to prepare for our next episode. This is episode number three, Networking Like a Rockstar. Uh, episode number four is entitled Sexy Stuff, Printing ma Mailing Labels. <laughs> I know, I know, there isn't much sexy about mailing labels. But to me, there is. Once you have mailing labels, you are so close to done with your special offer mailing See, in episode number two, we designed a special offer postcard, and I encourage you to order through Vistaprint or your own design company. Please at least have those cards order before you listen to episode four. Look, guys, this webinar series is designed to produce real results in your practice. That only happens if you follow suit through. So here's your kick in the rear. Order your special offer postcards. As a sneak preview to episode number four, we will not only be walking through the process of printing mailing labels, but I'm going to give you other ideas on how to use your special offer postcard. Have you ever heard of EDDM, Every Door Direct Mail? In the next episode, we're going to dissect how to use the United States Post Office's small business tool, EDDM every door direct mail. So today, I challenge you to order your postcards and find three meetings to attend over the next two weeks. I challenge you to practice your introduction, to write it out and practice it at those three meetings. All right, gang. I look forward to being in your ears again during another episode of Attract Clients Now. Until then, I wish for you a record-breaking week full of more clients than you've ever had before. Namaste, my friends.